It's hard to imagine an ecosystem without a major predator, but like any other ecological niche, there would have had to have been a period without one until an animal evolved to fill the gap. Before big cats and killer whales, or giant theropod dinosaurs and sharks, or even large prehistoric insects, the world's first top predator was a profoundly unusual animal by today's standards named Anomalocaris. Tucked away in the Canadian Rockies are the remains of an ancient underwater ecosystem. Not too dissimilar to ecosystems today, but the animals that occupied it couldn't have been more different. Most of the time, a fossil is a singular animal or plant imprinted into the rocks, offering just a snapshot of the time they came from. However, due to natural disasters or other natural phenomenon, every once in a while entire habitats can be preserved and so this Canadian mountainside is covered in a scattered mosaic of ancient creatures, known as the Burgess Shale Formation, offering a window into a different time. 500 million years ago, in a time known as the Cambrian period, twice as old as the oldest dinosaur, with landscapes being considerably more ancient and alien. The terrestrial world was probably completely void of vegetation, with the possible exception of very simple plants like mosses, although there isn't fossil evidence of plants until a bit later. The sunshine on the primitive landscape only lasted 21 hours, and oxygen in the atmosphere wasn't stable, fluctuating wildly. Most of the land was barren, but for the first time the oceans had fairly complex ecosystems, with animals that would have acted similarly to animals today. And the animals were highly unusual. There was a mouse-sized swimming arthropod that had five eyes and a small pincer, constructed in a way that isn't seen on any modern insect or crustacean and Hallucigenia that had a row of spines down its back with multiple legs ending in claws. Prehistory has many examples of strange animals, but what set the Cambrian apart is that almost all the animals had strange features and shapes that haven't been seen since, and the relation of these animals to modern animals, or even other prehistoric animals, are unknown or controversial. The only remotely recognisable creatures that lived at this time that don't have a controversial lineage were the trilobites, that although haven't survived into the present, did survive past the Cambrian until much later in the fossil record, and a small worm-shaped animal named Picaia that is thought to be a very early ancestor of fish. The creatures from this time being peculiar isn't entirely surprising, because you see a similar pattern after mass extinctions. You see the sudden appearance of many strange animals quickly adapting to fill the niches left open, but then very shortly after, many of them go extinct, being outcompeted. During the Cambrian period, complex multiple-celled life was still very young, so the conditions may have been similar to the aftermath of a big extinction event. From the beginning, study of these bizarre creatures followed a theme. They were very small, with most of them being smaller than 10 centimeters, and many of them had defense structures so it seemed very likely that there would have been a large predator in this ecosystem that would prey on these small creatures. However, for a long time a large predator wasn't discovered, or so they thought. Fragments of Anomalocaris were actually being discovered as far back as the late 1800s, but they were misidentified as other creatures. The first fossils of Anomalocaris discovered was one of its mouth appendages, but it was thought to be the body of a shrimp, and another fossil belonging to the creature was misidentified as a jellyfish. To add to the mystery, at the time these fossils kept being discovered next to each other, often arranged in the same way, two shrimp bodies with no head and a jellyfish next to each other again and again. Because the strange shrimp bodies had no digestive system, it was eventually realised that they were more likely some sort of appendage, however it was still wrongly identified, assuming it was a limb or leg of some large crustacean-like animal. Eventually, when scientists were sorting through Cambrian fossils, a specimen with one of these appendages was connected to the jellyfish that was actually its mouth part, irrefutable proof that these different fossils that kept being discovered were actually a single creature, the largest and fiercest of all the Cambrian organisms, Anomalocaris. Since the realisation that these different fossils were actually one animal, some really good fossils of Anomalocaris have now been discovered, and it couldn't have been stranger chasing down prey with undulating flaps on its side and a large fan-shaped tail that then crushed its victims with two crustacean limb-like appendages on its head. Anomalocaris is the earliest predator in the fossil record of this size and scope. There are even older fossils of multiple-celled organisms from a time known as the Ediacaran, but Ediacaran animals were a lot more primitive than Cambrian animals, acting quite differently, and today no big predators that hunt other animals have been discovered from this time. 
Like many animals that lived during the Cambrian period, they were not closely related to any groups of animals living today. They were from a prehistoric order of animals known as the Radiodonta, that went extinct around 400 million years ago and all shared many features with the normal Icarus, like fan-shaped fins down their head and body and head appendages. The Radiodonts are what is known as stem animals. They were arthropods, so they were related to other animals with exoskeletons like spiders or crustaceans, however their lineage diverged away from the other arthropods very early in their evolution, and they don't have any living descendants. So whereas modern oceanic arthropods are nearly all ground dwelling and not particularly strong swimmers, the radiodonts were free swimming predators. So very early on in the evolution of arthropods, a group of them adapted to fill niches that are often filled by fish and other free swimming animals today. Anomalocaris had a complicated discovery, but once they had been identified and so people knew what they were looking for, it turns out their fossils are actually very common, being known from Canada to Morocco to Australia. This means they must have been successful animals. Compared to most Cambrian creatures, Anomalocaris were very big, being around 60 centimeters long, and just being this large in a world occupied by little creatures would have given them a big advantage. But their success wasn't just down to their size, and they were evolutionary innovators as well, with some really well-preserved fossil eyes showing that their eyesight was some of the most acute of their day. They had compound eyes, being made up of many different lenses like most insects and crustaceans do today. Initially, it was thought that Anomalocaris' eyesight would have been similar to the trilobites that lived in its habitat and may have preyed on. Trilobites are the first animals known in the fossil record to have eyes, and they had compound eyes too. But unlike any modern animal, their eyes were quite different, and potentially more primitive. Their eyes were made out of a mineral called calcite, which would have made their eyesight blurry. However, Anomalocaris' eyes were more similar to modern animals, and their eyesight would have been comparable to the eyesight of any average insect living today. Very early on in the study of Anomalocaris, it was almost taken for granted that it preyed on the smaller bottom-dwelling hard-shelled animals in its habitat. There are fossils of trilobites from the Cambrian with lashing injuries, and Anomalocaris were the fast-moving large predators of the day, so it was thought that they would have lorded over the smaller and more primitive creatures like trilobites and other arthropods. However, a recent study has challenged this. It found that Anomalocaris probably weren't strong enough to crush hard-shelled prey, and it would have most likely caused damage to their appendages if they tried. So it seems much more likely they would have fed on softer prey, Taking this new information with the fact their bodies were much more adapted for free swimming suggests they were more likely pursuit predators of other swimming animals higher in the water column, like early protofish or jellyfish. But also, this means Anomalocaris filled a slightly more refined niche, and that Cambrian era ecosystems may have been more complex than previously given credit for. And shortly after Anomalocaris, many of its relatives would spread out and fill many different niches. The radiodonts were quite similar in body shape but their head appendages diverged drastically across the different species, showing they would have lived very different existences. One of Anomalocaris' smaller relatives, known as Herdia victoria, that lived at the very end of the Cambrian, was most likely a hunter of small prey on the sea floor, but not trilobites. Its appendages seem to have been adapted to sieve through sediment at the seabed for very small prey. Another larger relative, named Amplecta belua, even had what looked like a crustacean claw. However, there is no relation to modern crustaceans, and this would have just been convergent evolution. Up until fairly recently, it was thought that the radiodonts went extinct in the Cambrian period. However, in 2014, a fossil discovered in Morocco was identified as a radiodont that was dated to around 480 million years ago, in the time known as the Ordovician, being one of the last surviving members of the group. It was named a Girocassus, and it was very different from most other radiodonts. Its appendages bore five lobes, each with a comb of fine spines attached, and it is thought that they were filter-feeding animals, using these appendages to feed on plankton and other small creatures. And like modern animals that feed this way, they were really big, at least compared to other animals at the time. A Girocassus was around two meters long, making it easily the largest of all the radiodonts, and even the largest animal in the early Ordovician. This means the radiodonts followed a similar evolutionary pattern to whales, sharks, and manta rays of being top predators adapting into giant filter-feeding animals. Like nearly all the bizarre animals that existed at this time period, Anomalocaris went extinct, and after the last of its family members went extinct too, nothing like it has lived since. But the role of the apex predator has carried on throughout all of prehistory. Thank you for watching. 
A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.